Um, great. So um, let's start our today's reading group. So um, in our today's reading group, I will introduce uh, the algorithm on the Riemannian uh, manifold. Um, hey, so have you yes. shared your slides? Or uh, maybe oh, just oh. me don't see anything? Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot to share the screen. Um, can everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Um, in our today's reading group, um, I will introduce uh, the, 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 the sixth uh, lecture for the CS course uh, for six, eight, uh, uh, given by the uh, uh, Stanford. And then the, uh, basically, um, here is the outline of this course. Um, um, the basic goal of this course is to, um, uh, first of all, introduce a very well-known algorithm, PCA. And then uh, as we know, PCA algorithm is this designed for the Euclidean uh, space. And then uh, in this course, we would like to extend uh, uh, the PCA algorithm to the non-Euclidean uh, space. Um, and then uh, we will provide the generalized PCA, uh, which is also called the PGA, uh, to show how we can uh, um, adapt uh, algorithm in the uh, design for Euclidean space to a uh, non-Euclidean space. Um, and then uh, we also trying to uh, introduce, uh, uh, briefly introduce several uh, related algorithms, including NDS uh, and the uh, HNDS. So that is like the goal of this course. Um, so first of all, um, uh, let me first briefly introduce the uh, PCA to everyone. Although I thought most of you have already very familiar with this algorithm. Um, so PC, uh, the full name of the PCA is the principal component analysis. Um, it is an algorithm designed for data uh, in the uh, Euclidean space. Um, so the intuition of the PCA is that uh, given a set of points, we will line to find a set of orthogonal directions that backs capture the data. Um, and then, the, uh, so what do we mean by best capture data here? Uh, it means that we were trying to find some direction which can maximize the uh, variations uh, at each directions. Mm, so before we introduce the technical detail, uh, we would like to briefly introduce the benefit brought by the PCA algorithm. So by using the PCA uh, algorithm, uh, we ca it can help us to represent the data in the new coordinates. Um, also, uh, it is widely used to uh, reduce the dimension of the data. Uh, for example, if we have uh, some a set of data points uh, uh, which have the dimension of D, and then the, by using the PCA, we can reduce the uh, dimensional D to some uh, smaller number, for example, P. Um, and then the, it also widely used in order to uh, reduce the noise in the data. Um, so this is like a, a very well-known technique uh, adapted by a machine learning algorithm in order to represent the data uh, in terms of its principal component. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the setup of the PCA algorithm. Um, so the input of the PCA algorithm is a set of data points uh, x1, x2 to xn. And then the each data point is belong to a p-dimensional vector. Um, and so uh, in this way, we can uh, 
arrange all the data points uh, by using a matrix uh, which have the uh, size of M plus P. Um, and then the, we, we will assume that all these data points are sent centered, which means that uh, the, uh, the, the average of this data point will be zero, or the mean of this data point will be zero. Um, and then the, with this data point as the input, uh, the goal of the PCA is to output uh, M's principal component uh, V1, V2 until Vm. And then all these components are orthogonal. Um, so uh, the idea of the PCA algorithm is that uh, uh, they want uh, each component or the direction he uh, is trying to uh, project the data uh, into n uh, component or the directions. And then the goal is to maximize the variance. So um, for example, um, we have n data points here. And then the, in order to find the first principal component, the idea here is that we would like to project all the data to the uh, first component. Uh, and then the, we're trying to calculate the variance, uh, uh, the sum of the variance of this projection. And then the, we were lying to uh, calculate the uh, most important component by maximum maximize these equations. And then uh, by doing this recursively, we can find the second component, uh, the second uh, importance component and the third impo uh, importance component. And then the, this component should be also um, So uh, uh, the, uh, as we just introduced, the first step of the PCA is uh, find the uh, uh, the most important or the first uh, component. And then the, the idea is that we're trying to find a vector V and then the, by projecting every uh, data point to this, uh, uh, to this vector, um, we, will, uh, we will obtain the variance of each data point uh, uh, over these uh, directions. And then the, we will like to maximize this variance. Um, and then the, the vector which give the maximum value of this uh, equation so will be regarded as the first component. Um, and then the, uh, once we have like uh, uh, K minus one component, uh, uh, the next step will be, uh, we will line to continue find the uh, uh, K component. Uh, and then the, the basic idea is the deflection. So the deflection step will ensure that uh, uh, the K, so the deflection step essentially uh, indicates that the K leading eigenvector of the data matrix X is the leading eigenvector of the uh, XK matrix. So here the XK matrix can be obtained by the original matrix uh, 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 substrate uh, this, uh, this term. So um, um, by uh, following uh, this recursive step, we can um, we can calculate uh, uh, every component based on the previous calculation. Um, so that is like the uh, basic idea of the PCA, and uh, uh, we just give like a very quick recap of uh, the algorithm. And then I thought uh, most of you should be already very familiar with this algorithm. Um, so until now, is there any question? No, so we move to the second part. Um, um, so, uh, 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 with like uh, after we uh, re we find the uh, the k component uh, of the 
uh, data matrix X, we can project the data to the subspace while Y equal to X multiply V. Uh, and then the, by doing that, we can reduce the dimension of the data. Um, so that is like a widely used trick in order to do the dimensionality reduction. Um, um, so uh, that is like the traditional PCA algorithm over the uh, Euclidean space. Uh, now our goal is trying to make the PCA non-Euclideans. And then the, as we just introduced, um, um, in order to conduct the PCA algorithm, there's like very, uh, there's two important operation uh, we have to conduct. The first operation is that we, first of all, we need to find the mean of the data point. And then the, the second operation is that uh, uh, we will like to project the data into uh, a vector and then the, we trying to calculate the variance of this projection. And then the, in order to um, um, adapt the PCA algorithm to the non-Euclidean space, uh, uh, obviously we need to find out how to conduct the mean, uh, how to calculate the mean and the variance over the non-Euclidean uh, space. I have a question here. So what yes. does that mean? by saying making PCA non-Euclidean. Do we make uh, an assumption that the data is not in a Euclidean space? Right, do right. We... Okay. Yes, so the idea, so, um, um, so, uh, the assumption for us to conduct the PCA is that, uh, first of all, we assume that all the input data is in a uh, Euclidean space. And then the following this assumption, we can, um, 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 each data point can be represented uh, 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 in a high dimensional space. And then the, we can find some uh, vector and then the project each data point to this vector. So all these things are the concept over the Euclidean space. Uh, but uh, uh, as we know, uh, sometimes the, the, uh, not every data point uh, can be uh, described using the Euclidean uh, space. Uh, so uh, uh, for those data which um, distributed over a non-Euclidean space, uh, how can we find the principal component uh, of those data? That is like the goal of this course. Yeah. Now, how about the project vector V? Do we assume that they should be in the same kind of space as the input data or we can, for example, we can say, okay, the V actually we wish that they are in the Euclidean space. Uh, so for the PCA algorithm, uh, because we are discussing about the uh, Euclidean space, so uh, V is like, uh, 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 we can be a vector in the Euclidean space. But when it comes to the non-Euclidean space, we know that uh, vector is not the concept for the non-Euclidean space. So in order to achieve like the PCA over the non-Euclidean space, uh, we should first um, find out the uh, uh, tangent place, uh, tangent plan. And then the, that tangent plan the, uh, uh, can be described using the Euclidean space. And then the, by finding out that tangent plan, the every operation is uh, happen on that tangent plan. Um, and then the, by doing that, we, we, we could uh, uh, solve the non-Euclidean uh, scenario. Uh, we will discuss the detail in the following slides. Okay, great. So there probably also some kind of conceptual description, like what do we mean uh, by doing PCA in the non-Euclidean space? I think right. Just to provide a description, like how we can how we can do that, but like before 
introducing how we can do that, then we also need to kind of explain what do we want, what do we expect. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, so before we move to the detailed technical description, I, uh, I just trying to first um, give some insight of the comparison of different uh, concept in the Euclidean space and the non-Euclidean space. So as we know that uh, um, essentially we could have like a, a, a vector or a street line in the uh, Euclidean space. And then the, uh, when this uh, when this like uh, vector or the street light comes to the non Euclidean space, it will become as the geo uh, geodesic. Um, and then the um, um, the idea of PCA is trying to map the point to uh, a vector, and then the, which maximize the variance. Um, so similar as the idea of PCA, when we extend the algorithm to the non-Euclidean space, the, the, the idea is that uh, uh, instead of find a vector, we will like to find a uh, geodesic. And then the, by mapping the point to this geodesic, uh, we will try to maximize the uh, variance. Uh, will that be more clear? for you to understand the PCA over the non uh, I can vaguely understand that we're going to use this tangent space to map uh, the non-Euclidean space to that tangent space. And then we can do something similar to the regular PCA in that tangent space. Right. And we can map it back to this non-Euclidean space. Somehow right. I, I can understand the uh, steps or procedure, but still like visually, it's difficult for me to picture what we are doing uh, in the non-Euclidean space. Like in the Euclidean space for the PCA, right? So you have already have that very nice visualization. So it's, right. it's and also probably have seen this multiple times. We know that I'll give a, a, a let's say like 2D kind of uh, a set of data points. And then mm. we can say that, okay, in some direction, right? So uh, it uh, kind of can maximize the variance. So then that will be the, major component this, mm. well, for that is like we can really picture that so here I, I think probably it takes time so I yeah let's see okay so maybe in the later part uh, I see you can picture what we are doing for example in the speaker space so right. suppose like we have a speaker data right then what would be the like major component and how to describe it yeah probably later you're going to have examples but right now yeah probably right um actually I think that will be a better picture in order to illustrate uh, what happened. So the idea here is that, uh, mm, so we have like a set of point uh, 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 over a uh, uh, manifold. And then the, uh, in order to describe this data point, uh, 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 first of all, we were line to find uh, like most important component to describe this data point. And then the, because this is like a manifold, and then the, uh, uh, instead of like trying to map all these points into a vector, we were line to map this all these points into a geodematic, uh, geodet and then, the, for example, this is like what we, the, the, the final geodemic we find. And then the, the idea is that for all these points uh, in this manifold, when we map it to this, uh, this line, uh, this arc, or we can say, and then the, uh, we're trying to maximize the variance of all these points together. So will that be more like uh, I think this, this one makes uh, the concept like um, more, more clear, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so um, let's... Uh,
Okay, so um, after give like the intuitive example of what is the non-clear version of PCA algorithm, now we would like to introduce uh, the two important operation, uh, means and the variance over the non-Euclidean space. And then the, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we, we have like already introduced the manifold in our previous lecture. So manifold uh, is essentially a geometric object. Um, and then the, uh, we just present like uh, uh, three different uh, manifold here. And then we can see that um, for this manifold, oh, sorry, it is, it might be a little bit small. And then for this manifold, uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, most of the points will have like, uh, uh, we will we'll have uh, the value over zero. So it means will be plus one. And then the, um, sorry, I am a little bit confused about this figure. Uh, I think it's just a curvature. So for the three surface, the curvature is positive one. And if oh, it's flat, I... it's zero. And if it's like hyperbolic uh, surface, right, it's negative one. Oh, right, right, right. Um, yes, uh, thank you for the explanation. Um, so um, now we will like to introduce like uh, the two approach in order to calculate the meaning, the meaningful. Um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let's like, uh, 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 let's uh, first like uh, think about how do we calculate the mean in the Euclidean space. So the idea uh, for us to calculate the mean in the uh, Euclidean space is that, um, so, um, essentially, uh, we can regarding uh, the mean of a set of data point uh, uh, as another data point, and then uh, the uh, and then the, this uh, mean data point uh, suppose uh, so when we sum up the distance from all data point to this mean data point, we are supposed to have the minimal distance. So that is like the idea of the uh, of the mean uh, uh, of the mean of a set of data point, and then the uh, 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 if like all these data point is distributed over a uh, Euclidean space, mm -hmm. then the, we can uh, easily uh, divide the total vector sum of all data points uh, by the number of the data point. Uh, but uh, in the uh, uh, this cannot work over the uh, non-Euclidean space. Uh, but uh, following like the idea of how do we uh, how we calculate the uh, the mean, essentially, uh, in order to find the mean data point over the uh, manifold, uh, we can just try to minimize the, uh, the distance of all data points to this mean data point. Then uh, it can be formulated as the following, uh, uh, as the fo following formulas. So the idea is that uh, we're trying to find the data point X, and then the, this X we're trying to minimize the distance between it and all the other data point uh, in the input data. And then the, by doing this, um, then the uh, uh, actually, uh, 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 if we're trying to uh, adapt this equation to the Euclidean space, we can see that uh, 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 this uh, in the Euclidean space, the distance between x and the xi can be written in this way. 
and then the by set the derivation of this formula to the zero, we can find the uh, minimal. Uh, we can minimize these formulas and uh, achieve the uh, value of the x. And then we can see that essentially uh, this becomes like uh, the, 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 the total vector sum of, data, of all the data points uh, divided by the uh, number of the data points. Um, so this is like uh, recovered the usual mean in the Euclidean space. Uh, but uh, uh, now uh, we could not do the, uh, the simple uh, calculation in the uh, non-Euclidean space. So uh, we were trying to, uh, 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 we were trying to use another way uh, to calculate it. Uh, so there's like, uh, as we just introduced, there's like two approach to calculate the mean. The first one is the uh, extrinsic way and the other one is the uh, intrinsic way. And then the, for the extrinsic uh, means, uh, the idea here is that, uh, 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 suppose we have two points uh, in a meaning fold and then the, uh, uh, by uh, average, this uh, two point, we will achieve, um, um, we will achieve uh, the data point which represent in blue here. And then the, mm, uh, we know that this data point is not uh, in the uh, manifold. Uh, uh, which contain the X1 and X2. So in order to make sure that uh, this point can be appear over the uh, given manifold, we will map this point to the manifold. And then the, uh, 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 this mapped data point uh, uh, can be regarded as the extrinsic means. Um, so that is like uh, the uh, extrinsic way in order to calculate the means over the uh, non-Euclidean space. And then the, uh, another- so I just want to clarify for that the mapping here. The, yes. Because it looks like the circle is like uh, 1D manifold. So then does it mean that we map it into this like 2D? Euclidean space by just looking at its coordinates. So then we can have yes. that. Okay. Yes. So that's the meaning of the mapping. So then we can use the coordinates to calculate the center. And then, yes. okay. Then how we can map it back, assuming we know this by inverse, so once we know that, but, but yeah, how we can map it back because after we calculate the center utilizing the 2D, coordinates, then it's not on that manifold anymore. Right? Yes. Then what should I do here? So we actually, so according to this slides, uh, I think the idea here is that, so we're just trying to um, map this point back to uh, the meaning fold. But actually this slide didn't like provide a very detailed discussion of how to map it back. And then the, also this like uh, extrinsic mean won't be used in the following slide. So I, I actually didn't like uh, invest uh, but at least I enough can, forward, yeah. Uh, I, I can think of one way. It's like try to rescale, right? So assuming like the center is of the circus orange point, then if we rescale that blue point into the radius of let's say one, right? So then we actually can map that blue point into the right point. Oh, I think I know how to map it to the meaning fold. So the idea here is still the same, right? Um, every time when we're trying to map a point to a meaning fold, the idea is that uh, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to, uh, 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 so uh, we just denote uh, 
uh, a point in this uh, any point in this manifold as y. And then the, the idea is that we're just trying to figure out the distance between y and this point. And then the the the, the point which gives the uh, minimal distance will be regarding as the point uh, corresponding to this point to this blue point, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And then, the, uh, but uh, although we introduced this like uh, extrinsic means here, uh, actually this uh, extrinsic mean didn't like uh, widely use in, uh, in, 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 in order to calculate the mean of the point over the uh, non-Euclidean space. The more widely used uh, means should be this like uh, intrinsic means. So, um, the idea of this uh, intrinsic mean, uh, just uh, just like what we just uh, discussed previously, so it just following the definition of the mean strictly, and then the, the idea here is that uh, um, we were like to find the uh, mean uh, mu here, and then the, uh, and then the, this mean is supposed to give the minimal distance uh, over all the uh, input data point. And then the, by minimize this formula, we can achieve like the uh, intrinsic means. So because like this is like strictly following the definition of the mean, so it, it makes more sense and uh, uh, and uh, it will use in the uh, in our following algorithm in order to calculate the mean. Um, um, I think the advantage of the intrinsic mean is that uh, by doing this, we can ensure that this intrinsic mean doesn't depend on the coordinates. Um, and then the, we also call this intrinsic mean as the culture mean. Um, so here is like uh, an example for us to calculate the intrinsic mean. So suppose we have like uh, two data points here, x1 and uh, x2 um, uh, over this manifold. Uh, and then the, in order to calculate this intrinsic, uh, in, in order to calculate this main point, we're just trying to minimize the ds1 uh, x uh, we, we're just trying to minimize the distance between the mu and the x1, as well as the mu to the x2. And then the, after that, we can find uh, uh, mu. And then the, um, um, then the next question will be that, uh, uh, will, this, uh, will the calculation of the intrinsic mean always to be this simple? So, uh, the uh, the answer is no. Um, the reason is that, uh, as we can observe, that uh, uh, following the idea present here to calculate the intrinsic mean, we basically trying to uh, do the minimization over this formula, and then uh, uh, this minimization will not always give us a unique solution. So for example, we just give uh, an example here. So suppose we have a sphere uh, uh, showing here, and then so we have two point x1 and uh, x2. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Um, suppose we have like a manifold represented as the uh, the red circle here, and then the, uh, we can observe that. Uh, 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 sorry, I'm a little bit. Oh, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> my fault. Yes, yes. Uh, suppose we have a sphere. Uh, uh, as shown in this uh, slice, and then we have two point x1 and the x2. And then the, if we're trying to find the 
the intrinsic mean for these two points. Essentially, it will turns out to be this red circle here. And every point in this red circle could be regarded as the intrinsic mean. Um, so obviously this will, uh, this will give us like a, a, a countless number of the mean. So um, by doing the intrinsic mean, we cannot always to uh, obtain a unique solution. Um, so there's but, like but several- This is the special case, right? Right. This um, is sort of like an exceptional case, right? But, yes. Uh, in all the other cases, if you move like uh, x1 or x2 a little bit off from the northern south pole, and then you would have a unique answer, right? Um, let me think about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so suppose we just move the x1 to this point. Yeah. And then we have the x2 in this point. Then we still have like an infinite solution. So oh. I think uh, of according to the slice, um, the, 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 uh, So if the two points are exactly the opposite of the other on the sphere, then- Yes. Okay. So if all the point is over this side, um, and then the, we assume we do not have the other side, then the, we can ensure the uniqueness of the solution. Well, I feel like if uh, as long as these two points are not at the opposite two end, or right, if you draw a straight line between these two points, and if that's if it does not pass the origin, right, the center, mm. that should mm. be. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think you are correct. Yeah, as long as it won't pass the center, yeah. it will be fine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that is like, just give us like an example. And then the, we need to, um, uh, we need to be careful of like the uniqueness of like the intrinsic mean of the point. So um, uh, every time if we're trying to show there's a unique unique solution, then the, we have to show that uh, that is only works for some specific uh, manifold. Um, so that is like the property of the means uh, in a manifold. Um, and then the, uh, in order to calculate the mean, um, um, as we just like discuss, um, the, uh, this like uh, the way to calculate this intrinsic mean will modeling as like a minimization problem. So, a straightforward way to calculate the mean is using the uh, gradient descent uh, uh, in order to figure out the uh, minimum point. Um, so uh, for some special manifold, uh, actually uh, the scientists have already calculated the closed form uh, of the mean. For example, the hyper Hyperbolic model of the hyperbolic space. Um, so for those like special M, we can easily uh, uh, write down the mean uh, uh, straightforward, but uh, for like some unregular uh, manifold, we still need to use the gradient descent to calculate the mean. And then the, that is like, uh, uh, how we calculate the mean over the non-Euclidean space. And then now we would like to introduce uh, how can we calculate the variance over the non-Euclidean space. Um, so uh, um, in the uh, previously, uh, 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 in the Euclidean space, uh, we will return the variance in this way. 
So essentially, it is the expectation of the x uh, substrate the mean point. Um, uh, the, the, the square of the x uh, substrate the mean point. And then the, uh, uh, now if we're trying to return the variance uh, in a manifold, then the, uh, we need to replace uh, this uh, distance using the distance calculation formulas adapt in the uh, um, uh, in the non-Euclidean space. So this is uh, this means like the uh, distance between the point X and the main point of mu uh, over the non-Euclidean space. And then the, we're trying to uh, calculate the expectation uh, in order to calculate the uh, overall data point. And that will be the variance over the non-Euclidean space. Um, so uh, that is like the variance uh, over the non-Euclidean space. And, and uh, it is very simple. We just like replace the, uh, the distance uh, cal the distance calculation with the uh, DM. And then the, um, and then the uh, besides of the mean, uh, essentially we know that uh, the downside of mean is that uh, the mean is not robust to the out layer. Um, so um, in order to uh, address like, uh, in, in, in order to uh, make the algorithm to be more robust, um, it is possible for us to use the median instead of the mean in order to uh, calculate the PCA algorithm. So um, the uh, idea uh, of uh, calculate the median in the non-Euclidean space is also very similar to what we do to calculate the mean. Uh, the only difference is that instead of like uh, minimize the, the, sorry, the, the square of the distance between X and XI, we want to minimize the, uh, uh, the 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 street uh, the value of like the distance between x and x y, and then the, that will that is the definition of the uh uh meet uh, the friend friendship median over the non Euclidean space, and then the um uh a uh, uh, very a uh, useful algorithm in order to calculate this ventured medium uh, can be regarded as like the Wells felt algorithm. Um, and then the, I just like uh, present the basic algorithm here. So the idea uh, of the well felt algorithm is a form of iterative rebate least square function. Uh, and uh, this algorithm will define the set of weights that are inversely uh, proportional to the distance from the current estimate to the sample point and create a new estimate that is the weighted average of the sample according to this weight, um, which can be written in this uh, formulas. So that is like the basic algorithm to calculate the medium. What does that mean? For example, what are the x? What are the y? Uh, the y is like the medium. And y then the, the medium. Yes. X are the data points. We have how many data points? M? M data point. Yeah. So then then the idea is that uh, uh, it is like an iterative algorithm. So in each iteration, we will trying to... Um, so uh, in the first iteration, we will just randomly initialize this Y. And then the, we will like update this Y 
in each iteration based on the previous result of last iteration. And then finally, it will converge to the, uh, the main point, the, the median point, sorry. So the index of i is like iteration, right? Yeah. Index Here, the i is the, is so the iteration. Number, okay, j yeah. is like uh, referring to the data points. Yes. I see. So if you look at the numerator, then for the entire numerators, like we're going to sum over all the data points, and for each data point, it will be related by the distance from that specific data point to the current medium. Yes. Okay, so then how we can do the calculation here, because at some point you're saying that there's no addition in the non-Euclidean space. Uh, so sorry, can you repeat the question? Well, my question is like, there's no vector and no addition in non-Euclidean space. Everything yes. is about distance. So here, how we can add all those like x, j together? Oh, I see. So um, that is a good question. Um, personally, I'm not sure about the meaning of like, I'm not sure about the meaning of these uh, things here. So uh, one possibility, uh, I'm not, yes, yes, that is a very good question. And I did not have like a uh, answer to it. I will try to like uh, figure it out offline and then let you know about um, why we can do this over the non-Euclidean space. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then the, um, so uh, that is like uh, uh, the non-Euclidean operation required to extend the PCA to the non-Euclidean version. So after introduce the mean operation and the variance operation over the non-Euclidean space, now we're trying to introduce the PCA generalization, PGA. And then the, uh, uh, first of all, before we uh, introduce the, the technical detail, we will like to uh, compare some concept over the PCA and the PGA. So in the PCA, uh, 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 we would like to ensure all the points have the zero mean. And then the, uh, these kind of things will corresponding to the culture mean center. And then the, uh, in, uh, uh, for the PCA in the Euclidean space, we will like to uh, maximize the uh, variance. Uh, now the variance will become the friendship variance. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the component uh, uh, output by this PGA will be a unit vector. Uh, now uh, in the uh, manifold, uh, the unit vector will corresponding to a geodesic. So uh, in this way, the by generalized PCA to the non-Euclidean space, uh, we also call it as like the PGA, which is like the uh, principal geodesic uh, analysis. Um, before we introduce the technical detail, we I, I just want to give you a quick recap of some concepts which we have already introduced in our previous lecture. Um, so the first concept I would like to introduce is uh, geodesic. 
So, uh, it's, uh, so uh, this is like the generalization of the notation of the straight line to curved manifold. Uh, a geodesic is the shortest path between two points in the space. Uh, we can also regard it as like the straightest possible path in the curved manifold. Um, here is like an example of the geodesic uh, in a sphere uh, between P to the Q. And then the, the mathematical notation for the geodesic distance is the dpq. And then the, the second concept I would like to uh, give a recap is the tangent space. So the tangent space is the space spanned by the tangent vector at a point in the manifold. And then the, this can be simple simply be visualized as the tangent plane at the point in a sphere, um, which has shown in the next slides here. Uh, this TPM is the tangent plane. And then the, um, and then the, uh, 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 as we just like mentioned, uh, um, because um, in a non-Euclidean space, essentially we will not have the concept vector uh, or the concept straight line over the non-Euclidean space. So essentially uh, this tangent space is not part of the manifold. Uh, it is just like something we're trying to construct in order to help us to do the calculation. Um, um, it is like a separate Euclidean space. Um, and then the, that is like the concept of the tangent space. And then the, uh, given a manifold and the tangent space, the next concept I would like to introduce is the exponential map. So this uh, exponential map essentially is trying to enable uh, for a point in the manifold uh, to, uh, to, to, to get from one point to another point in a manifold. So um, as shown in this uh, picture, uh, for example, um, we have a manifold which is a sphere here. And then we also have like a flat tangent plane at the point uh, uh, of P. And then the, uh, uh, this tangent plane essentially uh, is uh, uh, describe uh, Euclidean space, and then the um, 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 and then the uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, if like we have another point uh, uh, a over this manifold, and then the, in order to calculate the distance between the A and the P, we were trying to take advantage of this tangent plane. And then the, the idea here is that we were trying to map A to this tangent plane. And then the, uh, by, uh, by, by finding like the shortest uh, path between this uh, map point to the P, we can ensure that this uh, the, 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 the shortest path between A and P. That is like the exponential mapping. And then the, uh, we will define the, the uh, uh, mathematically, we will written this uh, exponential mapping uh, as follows. So, uh, given like uh, 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 a point P over a manifold, and then the, uh, a vector V uh, over the tangent plane, uh, uh, we can map this V uh, to a geodesic uh, uh, pass through the point P, which can be written as uh, here. And then the uh, uh, 
uh, we have like the exponential mapping and then the, the inverse operation of the exponential mapping is the log mapping. So the idea here is that uh, 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 the, uh, the exponential mapping is trying to uh, map, uh, uh, map the point in the tangent plant to the manifold. Uh, the log mapping is trying to do the uh, inverse operation, which is trying to map uh, a point uh, uh, over the uh, manifold to this tangent plant. So uh, it is mathematically defined in this way. So I have questions. Why, yes. why they are called exponential map and log map? Even geometry wise, I, I know what they are doing, but uh, what's the connection of these two mappings to the exponential function, log function? Um, I essentially don't think it, there is like a connection between the log map to the log function. Okay. I think that is just like a notation. Okay. And yes. then, then what does that uh, log p a and absolute value mean in the in the text description? Uh, oh, you mean this one? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so this one is uh, so essentially, um, um. Uh, the log mapping is trying to map a point in the manifold to the tangent plane. And then the, it will result in a vector V. And then the, uh, this vector essentially will have like uh, uh, the length. So we just like uh, uh, denoted uh, the, the distance, uh, the, the length of this V in this way. So log PA, because according to the formula that you write in the bottom, it's the right. mapping from gamma P to, to V, right? Right. But, but somehow if we wanted to put a norm there, then that log PA itself should be, should be this PV vector, so then we can take a norm, or the right. vector, yeah. This so log PA. By the notation. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, um I think uh, a better explanation will be he will be so this is like some definition. So um, although the log operation is trying to map a point uh, to a, a point in the manifold to the vector v, um, but uh, actually now we will have like two things. The first thing is like the geodesic here, and then the, the other thing is the vector here. And then the, the definition says that uh, uh, the norm of the vector v is equal to the uh, geodesic distance. So in that way, we were trying to use this like uh, uh, log PA to define this DPA. So this log PA is like the vector in the Euclidean space. So it is totally fine for us to return it in this way. Yeah, I can understand it tries to just say that, okay, the, the norm of the V vector equals to the geodesic distance between P and A. Mm. Yeah, but just the notation, I just feel it utilized um, in, in the first formula and the second formula, they are, they are kind of different. I see. Yeah, one is like mapping and the other is more like the vector itself. Right, right. I see. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. That is like a little bit weird. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just uh, added another comment here. So once mm -hmm. we know the manifold exactly, for example, in this case, as illustrated, it's like it's frequent surface, then uh, then we can make that mapping very explicit, right? Because for example, if we know the coordinates of P and A, then mm -hmm. we should be able to write down the mapping explicitly using the the, the condition coordinates. Yes. Okay. Um, so that is like some concept we have already introduced in the previous lecture. And then the, now we will like to uh, move to the technical detail of the principal geodesic analysis. Um, so first of all, we were trying to compare the concept of the component in the principal component analysis uh, with the concept of the geodesic in the manifold. So instead of uh, trying to find uh, uh, the most important component here, uh, we were trying to find the most important geodesic. Uh, when we're trying to extend the PCA to the non-Euclidean space. And then the, um, the principal uh, geodesic uh, essentially is a curve that has the highest variance of the projection of the data point onto the... And then the, the, uh, the subspace spanned by the component uh, 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 is like uh, can also be regarded as like the geodesic. Um, and then the, uh, we also want to introduce another concept sub manifold. So here the sub manifold uh, edge of M is uh, geodesic at X. If all geodesic of edge through X are also geodesic in M. Um, and then the, uh, by after introduce this concept, now we're trying to uh, introduce how can we find the principal uh, sub manifold. Um, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, in order to uh, conduct this principal to uh, in order to conduct this principal geodesic analysis, um, we were trying to work in a tangent space uh, of the mean, uh, 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 the tangent space of the main point. And then the, we denote this tangent space as the uh, T mu M. And then the, um, um, the idea here is that uh, 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 given some basic vector belong to this tangent space, uh, we will align to build, uh, 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 build, build the, the, the VK, which is the span of all these basic vector. And then the, uh, and then the, uh, uh, the this space is then defining as like the uh, exponential mapping of this uh, VK. Um, that is like the uh, the formal definition of the principal sub meaningfuls. Um, and then the uh, uh, and then the. Uh, now we have our like uh, sub meaningful edge. Then uh, the question will be that uh, uh, giving a uh, giving a uh, giving any data point, how we can map this data point uh, onto this sub meaningful edge, and then uh, 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 as like uh, we. Uh, discussed previously, the idea here is like very simple. Uh, uh, the idea is that we're trying to uh, figure out a point belong to this sub meaningful edge. And then the, 
uh, uh, we were trying to find uh, a data point which can minimize the distance between X and uh, Y. And then the, this like uh, data point which give the uh, minimized distance uh, will be regarding as the projection of X over the uh, submeaningful edge. And then the, uh, by, uh, by reading this kind of things in the log mapping, uh, this uh, data point can also be written as like, uh, uh, we're trying to minimize uh, the, uh, the uh, we're trying to figure out a point over the manifold. And uh, if we're trying to map this data point back to, uh, to the tangent plan, then the, the vector uh, defined it uh, by X and uh, map data point Y, uh, uh, we'll have like the minimal distance. So that is like, uh, uh, by doing this, uh, we just, uh, we, 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 we are able to get rid of the operation over the manifold. And then we're just trying to map every point to the tangent plan. And then the, we just reduce the uh, minimization, or we just like ensure all the minimization will happen over the Euclidean space, uh, the tangent plan. Mm, so that is like, uh, uh, so I have a question because there are two space, two, two manifolds. One is the sub-manifold and the, the, the original manifold. So right. when you, yeah, I try to make the connection to the original definition. So um, for loss, yes. sub X and Y. Mm, so now we are trying to build the, for example, the tangent space on the sub-manifold, is that the case? Right. Okay, so then we're going to map this Y, which is in that sub-manifold to the tangent space for that specific uh, sub-manifold. Yes. Okay, and then, uh, and then what we're going to do, we're going to map this X. We will um, map this, uh, so let me see. What's which. the role of X here? Um, so the X is the data point. Okay. It's in the original manifold, right? It, it is on the original manifold. And then the first of all, uh, uh, given a point in the original manifold, uh, the first thing we're trying to figure out is that uh, uh, how to uh, uh, how to project this uh, data point uh, to a given uh, sub manifold? Uh, so I think here the sub manifold might be a little bit com uh, might be a little bit uh, it will, will cause some confusion here. So instead of saying this is uh, instead of defining it as like the sub manifold. Uh, um, I would prefer to define it as like the geodesic. So suppose we have like a geodesic edge. And then the, we're trying to map a point uh, to this geodesic, uh, a point in the manifold to this geodesic edge. And then the, the idea is that so we're trying to figure out a point over this geodesic. And this point can minimize the distance between X and it. But geodesic means, you know, I, because it's easy to understand okay, what would be the geodesic distance. But when I say a geodesic is like, uh, is something right? So the data part is also confusing me because it's even easier for me to understand what does a sub manifold mean. But it's very difficult I see, to, I see. for me to understand. Like if we just mentioned geodesic, what does that mean? I'm not I sure see. whether you have the same feeling. Uh, uh, because uh, the idea, the the final output of this uh algorithm is like the geodesic. And then the sub meaningful here is just defined as like uh, uh, the 
uh, the here we can just like uh, go over the definition of the sub manifold. So sub manifold edge of M is like geodesic at X if all geodesic of edge through X are always geodesic in M. So this is essentially a collection of the geodesic. Okay, then for this law, right, in the original definition, it says that uh, the, the tangent space, like the log has two things. One is P, the other is A. P is the kind of the, the point in the manifold that uh, we're going to have that tangent space. Right. The P is kind of the, yeah, the place that we're going to build that tangent space. Yeah. And yes. this capital A in the original definition is like another uh, data point in the manifold. And we, we wish to see also okay, what will be the vector in the tangent space that the A can be mapped to. Yes. So now back to this notation, right? Of course, the notation is slightly different, but then I, I'm just confused. Uh, because there are two states. One is this edge, the other is the orange and the manifold. So then what will be the P and what will be the A if we want to make the connection to the orange and the definition? I see. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, the thing is, so uh, suppose we have like uh, two data points. And then the the uh, the first data point is x, and then the, the second data point uh, is y. And then the x is in the original manifold, and the y is like a subset of the original manifold. So which means that both x and y are in the original manifold. And then the, um, we're trying to uh, we, 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 what we're trying to do is that uh, to calculate the projection, we just define this projection as like the, uh, the point y, which gives like the uh, minimal value here. And then the, uh, uh, in this notation, uh, okay. both x and y are the point over the manifold. But, yeah, but uh, it has to be in the original can... manifold, right? Otherwise, yes. So the geodesic between x and y has to be defined in the original manifold. It yes. cannot be okay. So then I think the mapping should on that original manifold instead of the sub manifold. Do you think that's the case? Uh uh let me introduce in another uh, let me explain it in another way, maybe. Mm. So first of all, we would like to explain what is this edge. So this edge can be regarded as like a subset of right. the original manifold. Right. And then the uh, but uh, uh, by saying it is a subset, which means that it doesn't cover the every point in the original manifold. Then which point do it cover? Uh, it will cover all the geodesic, which can go through the, the main point. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I think I, I can get it by mapping this X to the origin of P and Y into the origin mm. of A. And here we just needed to constrain this Y onto that step manifold. Right. So then, okay. Yeah, if this is the case, then I think I, I could understand that. I see. Um, um, so uh, in this equation, both X and Y are on the manifold. And then uh, we're just trying to uh, uh, figure out the distance of two point in the manifold. But uh, by playing this trick, uh, what we're trying to say is that uh, uh, we can essentially map the X and the Y to the tangent plane. And then uh, as we just discussed, the tangent plant uh, is like a uh, 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 Euclidean space. And then the, now the calculation can be, uh, uh, and then the, now we can do the calculation by 
um, first uh, we we have the point over the manifold and then we trying to map this point over to the tangent plant and then we minimize the distance between the uh, point in the tangent plant in order to make the calculation to be more efficient. So that is like uh, uh, the basic idea of do, doing the projection. And then the, uh, so uh, the next thing is like, uh, uh, um, because like, uh, uh, let me see which one would be better. Okay, maybe we can start from this uh, slice. Um, um, so just following the principle, uh, just following the idea of the principal component analysis, uh, what we're trying to do uh, uh, here for the non-Euclidean space is that, uh, first of all, suppose we have already calculated the main point of the data point. And then the, uh, we just denoted this point as the mu. And then the, uh, the idea of the, uh, princ uh, the principal component analysis is that we trying to maximize the variance, uh, which means that uh, we're trying to calculate the distance uh, between, or we're trying to find a uh, uh, we're trying to uh, find a uh, 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 geodesic, and then the, by map all the point to this geodesic, uh, uh, as well as the main point to this geodesic, we can maximize the variance. So that is like uh, following the definition of the principal component analysis. Uh, that is like the equation we achieve in order to uh, calculate the uh, first component, uh, uh, first principle geodesic um, um, of a set of non-Euclidean data points. So, um, um, but the, uh, we know that uh, uh, by doing this, this, uh, uh, after uh, doing that, uh, it will, it will return to like, uh, uh, it, it will, it will, uh, the, the, the output will be a vector here. And then the, uh, 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 we know that uh, the vector is like the concept over the tangent plant instead of the, instead of the component of a uh, manifold. So after getting this like the uh, vector v i l v v one as like the first uh, principal component, we're trying to map it back to the manifold space, and then we use the exponential uh, operation in order to achieve this goal. Then finally, this edge will be the geodesic, the the, the first principal geodesic we achieve. So that is like the basic idea of the, uh, the, the principal uh, geodesic analysis. And then uh, similar to the principal uh, uh, component analysis, uh, we can recursively find the following uh, component uh, using the uh, the similar step um, by maximize the variance. So um, that is like just some explanation. Um, is this part clear? Uh, yes, I think in the high level, I, I'm, I'm clear. So I think for the details, like how we can do the calculation, like more technical stuff, I think probably yeah, need more time to digest. But uh, I see. for me, the high level idea is clear. I see. Um, so that is like, uh, 
um, the idea uh, of like this uh, uh, this algorithm. So um, so let me like to to make it to be more clear. Maybe I can just like first give like a summer summarization to the algorithm, and then we can go back to these slides. So the idea, uh, we just take this picture as an example. So in order to uh, convert, uh, so the idea to calculate the, the PGA, um, we're just trying to convert the PGA problem to a PCA problem. Um, so how can we do that? First of all, suppose we have a set of data points um, so, which is denoted as the uh, red node here, and then the uh, suppose, uh, and then the, the first step is that we want to calculate the mean of the data point, and then the, suppose the mean of this data point is like the the big red node here, which is like the topmost node uh, uh, on this sphere. And then the, uh, and then the uh, after finding the mean of the point, we will trying to uh, realize the tangent space at the mean, and then the, we trying to map every data point to the tangent space by the log mapping. And then the, uh, after that, so we know uh, as we just discuss, uh, as we just mentioned the distance between the data point uh, to the data point to the main point uh, on the meaning fold uh, uh, is essentially the, the, the length of the vector uh, in the tangent plan. So in order to minimize, uh, in, in order to calculate, uh, so by like a leverage such a uh, property, instead of like uh, calculate the distance over uh, all the data point in the meaning fold, we just uh, first map all the data point in the tangent plane, and then the, we just uh, define this distance, uh, we just calculate the distance using this uh, mapping point in the tangent plan. And then the, because all this tangent, uh, all this uh, data point now is in the Euclidean space, then the, in order to calculate the, the principal component, we can just uh, apply the PCA algorithm on this map value VI. And then in order to figure out the principal component, and then this principal component will be a vector in this tangent plan. Uh, in this tangent plan, then the, by map back this uh, vector in the tangent plan to the meaning fold, uh, we can get the final uh, 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 geodesic, uh, the, uh, the 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 most important geodesic uh, 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 of this like uh, uh, data point. Um, so the idea here is that uh, 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 we just trying, so the basic idea is that uh, uh, we trying to leverage the tangent plant uh, uh, at the intrinsic mean, and then the, we trying to convert this problem uh, into the Euclidean PCA problem, and then the, we use uh, this op uh, optimization to calculate it. Therefore, this algorithm also called the tangent PCA algorithm. Um, so that is like uh, uh, the basic idea of the algorithm. And then the, um, we also show some simple formula for case like the sphere here. And then the, we know that the sphere is just like some, um, some well-studied uh, geometric object. So uh, actually the exponential uh, mapping and the, the log mapping can be easily formulated using the following uh, equations. Then by using these, we can just easily calculate everything. Um, 
But uh, if like we're trying to apply the exponential uh, mapping and the log mapping to some uh, uh, to some non-standard object, then we will need to use like the gradient descent in order to cal calculate them. Um, and then the, uh, there's also like some other algorithm uh, can be regarded as like the va variation of the PGA. And then the, uh, so as we just mentioned before, um, for the PGA, we actually make some assumption. So the, assum uh, the first assumption is that uh, uh, we assume that the geodesic will go through the mean, and then uh, we trying to calculate everything based on the mean point. Uh, um, and then the, an alternative algorithm could be like, uh, instead of picking the main point, uh, we can, uh, we we can we can just pick the median point or some other point in order to better describe the data. Um, so there's also some other algorithm which trying to be more generalized. So instead of uh, uh, require the data to be distributed in a meaningful. Uh, uh, some other algorithm, for example, the barycentric subspace can also uh, deal with the data set, dealing with the data set uh, uh, which doesn't distribute it in a meaningful. Mm. So um, that is all about the PGA algorithm. And then uh, by using like that, by following the same idea, it is also easy for us to adapt the NDS algorithm, which also designed for the Euclidean space to the non-Euclidean space. So the idea of the NDS algorithm is just like, uh, suppose we have like an input matrix, which provide all pairwise distance among the set of point. And then the, we will line to, uh, output uh, a set of points in order to satisfy this pairwise distance. And then the, uh, all, uh, all these things is like calculate based on the Euclidean space. Uh, but uh, now by, um, um, by, uh, uh, by just like swap the distance function using the MDS with the non-Euclidean space function, uh, the distance function, we can ex easily extend this uh, uh, MDS algorithm uh, to the non-Euclidean space. So the, uh, uh, just like in summary, um, um, this lecture just like give us a basic idea of how we can extend an algorithm design for the Euclidean uh, space to non-Euclidean space. So the basic idea is very simple, which is like, uh, mm, uh, so the difference between uh, Euclidean space and the non-Euclidean space is that uh, we have like different way to uh, define the distance and calculate the distance. And then uh, in order to um, adapt an algorithm designed for the Euclidean space to the non-Euclidean space, the key point is that uh, we're trying to replace the distance function with the non-Euclidean version. And then the, once we can figure out that part, then we can adapt an algorithm to the non-Euclidean space. That is like the, mm, the, the idea of the algorithm uh, for the non-Euclidean space. Um, and then the, we also have like some further reference provide here. And then the, um, I think that's all about today's presentation. Okay, thanks. Uh, Thank you. Up here then.